Hello, I'm Duffy Neubauer. I'm the curator of the Starkville Civil War Arsenal. One of the items at the arsenal that's on display is this wooden sweet gum mortar. And it was referred to as a sweet gum mortar for the simple reason it was made from a sweet gum tree. They were cut on site, taking a draw knife and then shaped the exterior. They used an auger, a two inch auger to bore down through the center and then they used reams to open up the bore. They did leave a chamber down at the bottom. After the wood was shaped, they attached the bands. There are three bands that are shrunk onto the wood, and once the bands were on place, they then painted it. People are kind of surprised to see that it's painted black. You gotta remember, they cut green wood, and the green wood would dry and split and check, so to retard that, they painted them and they also found out that by painting them, it helped protect the charring on the inside of the bore. Now, there are a couple different types of wooden mortars that were used. Uh, the very first time that a wooden mortar was used uh, during the American Civil War was at the Vicksburg Campaign in July of 1863. And Grant's men, the Union, used the wooden mortars to lob shells up into the earthworks at Vicksburg, and the the last uh, 48 hours of the siege of Vicksburg, uh, they fired almost 500 shells from these wooden mortars. And uh, the wooden mortars come in a couple different styles. Uh, some of them are three banded. As you can see, this uh, mortar has three bands on it. Some of them were only two banded. Some of the mortars that had the beds underneath them were probably the most used of the Civil War. Uh, the ones at Vicksburg did not have a bed. They were simply the beer keg mortars that were just the tube flat on the bottom, and then they were dug into the ground. The mortars, first time used, as I said, were at Vicksburg, but they were also used at Knoxville, Petersburg, Spanish Fort, and Blakely. It's estimated that there were about 50 wooden mortars used during the American Civil War. Before we go ahead and fire the mortar, we want to take a little bit of an explanation or take a look at the ammunition that it used. Now the mortars were bored basically in six 12 pounder or 24 pounder and those were the very common standard smooth bore ammunition that they already had on site. So they literally made the cannon to fit the ammunition and the 12 pounder was the most common shell available during the American Civil War, and most of the wooden mortars were 12 pounders, what we're shooting today. Now, these mortars were actually made by the engineer corps. The engineers built them, the engineers shot them, and for the ammunition, they had to go to the artillery to get the ammunition. So when they went to get their 12 pounder ammunition, it could come from one of two places. It could come from the limbers. Those were the uh, vehicles that towed the guns around and they had a big chest on them, or they could have gone to packing boxes. These packing boxes right here is how the ammunition came to the men in the field. And they were usually marked the type of ammunition that's in the box, the number of rounds, and then the type if it was a shot, shell, case, or a canister. Uh, the most logical thing is that these engineers went and got packing boxes uh, of ammunition that was used on the standard field artillery pieces. But I want to show you something to begin with, is when they took ammunition that was meant to be used in the 12 pounders, this is what standard field artillery ammunition for a smooth bore looked like in the Civil War. It's called fixed ammunition, and we're going to dissect it or do a little bit of anatomy work on it. All right, here's what a standard 12-pounder ammunition looked like. This is the fixed ammunition that would have been used in the 12-pounders. Some of you who have an artillery background might be a little bit surprised that it looks like this. First of all, there is what's called a cap on the back end so that when this gun was loaded in the field artillery, they had to remove the cap from the projectile. And when they removed the cap, that exposed the powder bag in the back uh, of the uh, shell. So when this was loaded into a cannon, we all know for you artillerymen out there that the vent pick would come through, go through this bag right here into the powder. 
Now, one little tip that probably not a lot of people are familiar with, that is in a smoothbore gun, quite often those smoothbore guns wore out as they were used in the windage, and that's the difference between the ball and the bore got bigger, they lose their accuracy. So one little tip that they would use is you could take the cap and put that over the ball to reduce the windage. It's kind of like using a wad over a round ball and a musket. So that helped reduce the windage when the bore wore out. They didn't need that to shoot the mortar. Next thing is this is the cylinder and it was tied on a string onto this wooden block, which you're gonna see in just a second as I remove the cylinder. So now this is what the fixed round looks like, but they still aren't gonna use this in the mortars. But what they do have is all the components necessary. They have a powder bag, which contains the powder. They have a wooden block called the sabot, and they have the ball or the projectile. And they disassemble this to make the ammunition. When we disassemble that ammunition and we take the powder out of the powder bag, I might bring that powder bag back up here. Here's another powder bag. This powder bag was very important in firing a mortar because this is where the loose powder came from. So they disassembled this powder bag, measured out the powder that they wanted, and they poured it into this cloth bag. This bag was made out of merino, flannel, or a very tight woven wool. And the reason you wanted such a tight weave in the material is you didn't want that powder, that real fine dust, to leak out. Because otherwise that could be very, very dangerous. It could cause an explosion. And that's part of the reason that this cylinder is around the powder bag. It helps keep the projectile intact and it keeps all that powder or dust in the inside. For the mortar, they're gonna salvage the powder out of here, put their powder charge in this bag, and this will be walked up to the mortar, dumped in there, and that's the powder charge. We've looked at the, uh, the powder bag. We know how the powder bag was used. We know that the projectile was disassembled and that they used the shell and the shell that we're going to shoot today is a hollow projectile. And you can hopefully see that it has a tapered hole going into the projectile. This was filled with seven and a half ounces of black powder. Then there was a wooden drive-in fuse. You can see this wooden fuse. It has a hole all the way through it. That was with a mallet driven into the projectile. And then there was a fuse. This is actually an original Frankfurt Arsenal fuse and you probably can't see it but there's little eight little marks each one of those is a second so I could cut that and the shorter I cut it the faster it burned so that fuse went into the fuse holder the fuse holder was driven into the projectile and when the mortar went off it would light that fuse burn down and make it explode so that's just the basics of how the ammunition worked. And the next thing is, what you're probably waiting to see is to uh, fire this weapon, probably the most unique weapon of the American Civil War, a sweet gum mortar. Fire!
Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, this demonstration of a very, very unique Civil War weapon. And there are three originals still in existence. There are two of them in the uh, Missouri Historical Society, and there is one in the Minnesota State Capitol Building. So there are three originals that you can still look at today. If you did enjoy what you saw on the video today, you might like to go to my website, the Starkville Civil War Arsenal.com. And if you enjoyed the website and you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate it if you would share it with your friends. Thank you very much for uh, viewing this video, and I hope to see you sometime at the Starkville Civil War Arsenal. Thank you. Prepare to transport to your post. Forward. March.